Hi, this is Tweak. On today's episode of Tweaks with Tweak, we're going to take my idea for a sun catcher and add some music to it with some bells. Join us! Supplies you need for this project are you will need some beads, lots of beads. I use four millimeter through 12 millimeter beads in various colors. And you will need some prism balls. You'll need some craft circles, MDF six inch circles. You'll need some hooks and some wire. You will need some findings, bead findings such as crimping beads, some clamps. You will need chain to hang your project and also some bells. So let's get started. I found these little brass bells online. The link is below in our description. And I thought these were just perfect with just a little, little bit of sound to add to my sun catchers. So let's make a beaded bell out of the bell. And I'll show you how I did that. We take the bell. The bell is hooked together by a piece of string. So I'm just gonna cut that off using my clippers. And as soon as I cut it off, it falls apart. There's a bead, the brass bell part, and then the little clapper that's on the inside. So what I did was I took some of my wire, because I want this to be a part of the sun catcher. So I'm gonna take a couple feet of wire. I always use too much wire, but I'd rather have more than not enough, because it's easier in the end to work with. Where is going bonkers? Okay, you go over here for a while. I'll come back to you. So I'm taking some wire and I'm going to take the clapper part that has the little ring circle there. And I'm just going to run it down the wire till it falls to the middle. And I'm going to take these two ends and push them through inside the bell. These are beautiful little brass bells. And you don't have to they don't have to clang anything into anything else, just them moving adds a little bit of sound with the... It doesn't have to hit anything else to, to ring. And then you put back on this bead that held it together originally. And I have it on the string and it's not going to go anywhere, it's, it's secure. Then I have to choose what color I'd like to make. And today I'm going to make um, the green. I've got these four millimeter beads. A little bit hard to see, but you put them on the wire and they're beautiful. Hard to see while I'm stringing them, is what I mean. So I'm gonna use the one I've already made here as a guide and I'm gonna string the beads on the wire till I get to that length. So here I go. Now as you string your own bells and string the little beads on the wire, I've got mine, they're between 10 and 11 inches long. And what I do is I set up one that I like the length of and then I pattern the others to it. So I'm gonna make five of these strings and I'm using different colors, rainbow colors today. So I'm at the end of this, I'm going to put a little crimping bead on the end and attach a lobster clasp. So when I make, oh, get on there. Okay, everything's fighting me today. Let's get one little crimper. I found too that if you let one wire lead a little bit ahead of the other, that things go a little faster. Tedious, but it's real pretty in the end. All right, so now I get a lobster claw. Real simple. And I'm going to add the wire to this and then I'm going to push through back through that that crimping bead. Okay so now I've got that crimping bead and now I'm just going to hang on to the, the claw 
and just give a tug, gently tug. As I'm using my guide here, so I want the loop to be just around that size. I want them to try to hang evenly on the piece, on the sun catcher. So I'm going to pull a little bit more. You're just manipulating the wire a little bit till you get something similar that's close. Good. And now I'm just going to crimp that bead. Hold all that wire in place. And now you've got your claws here for attaching. Everything's all fixed. And then I'm just going to use the clippers to get tight up to that crimping bead and just snap away the excess. And so what I've got here is two of the little bells on their strings. And like I said, for our sun catcher, bell sun catcher, we're going to make five of these. And then we'll attach them to the base. And here's the other side I'm going to make. So I've got two kinds hanging on the sun catcher. I've got the bell hanging straight down and I've got a little more decorated piece. So since I'm working with green, I'm putting this one down as my guide. I'll put the green aside for a moment and I'll pull out complementary beads. I will need one prism. The link for these are in the description below if you'd like to order those. They're beautiful. And then I need a cap bead. This came off an old string of garland. I'll need another lobster claw. And I will need various other little beads here. I've got to follow my pattern here. Go straight up. It gives you an idea too of where I was going with this. And I just get out all my beads and see what works. I had little elongated beads. Where did they go? They're in here. I just have to grab them up. There they are, all hanging out on one side here. So I need one, two, three, four, five, six of these little elongated beads. If you didn't have elongated beads, you could just use any other bead, just something that's pretty. I like the elongated ones because they kind of sneak into the cluster balls and help hold them in place. Yes, I said cluster ball, didn't I? Here's a 12 millimeter bead we're gonna put here. And we'll work our way up. Okay, cluster balls. I've made lots and lots of cluster balls and the link if you want to see how to make the full cluster ball is right here. So if you'd like to see how that's done, that's where you go to find out. Mine are already done ahead. So I've done greens. Then I need another little filler. And then I need more green. Various sizes of cluster balls. These tiny beads are the four millimeter, these are the six millimeter, and these are the eight millimeter beads. So yes, I've been working with a lot of beads. And then you could add more if you want to. Yours can look however you want. I've got these other beads here that would fit in nicely too. I might swap them out. Let's see how this goes. Another one there. And then you'd fill up the remainder of your wire with the complimentary little bead like we just used. Now I just said it, swap these out. I have some teardrop beads here too. And these, if you have these, which I don't have them for any other color, I do have them in green. So I was thinking, well, teardrops are nice because they fit into, when you string, they fit very nicely into the cluster ball and they help hold it in place on both ends. So maybe I will do that. Let's see if we have enough. One, two, three, four. We seem to have enough. I think I'll leave one of these on the bottom and one at the top. Okay, so there's our pattern. And I'm going to play around with this a little bit. Get some wire. Once you have your pattern laid out, I want double the length of whatever this is here. So if we've got that long of a wire, I'm going to double it. Got a little more than I need there. So we're going for at least a foot. Okay, And we start out with these beautiful prism balls. Now they have a groove cut right into them. So you take one piece of the wire and push it through. 
and this will sit very nicely at the bottom. That's the bottom of your of your sun catcher on this part. Then I've got a little cap bead that I want to put to hide that spot there. Now you're pushing both wires through because from now on you'll do both wires. And that sits there like that. Now we continue and follow on. I put a little teeny bead there and this is just strictly how I think I like it to look. If you use glass beads they all catch light just beautifully. Now I have a little teeny tiny cap bead. Just why am I working with all these tiny tiny things? But they are beautiful in the long run. I just have to hang in there and stick with it. Oh, got it through. A little tiny bead is going to act like a little tiny decoration for that little bead there. We're that far. Okay, gonna continue. I had clear beads there and I was gonna switch over to the green. I'm going to use elongated one first. I'm gonna wait for the color when I get closer to the cluster balls. So you put that on and then we have one of these 12 millimeter beads. These are beautiful too. So we're going big, big bead down to smaller. And is this where we put the green? I think it is. So this one's gonna be a little bit different. Now we're getting into the cluster balls. I'm pretty good at hiding the knot, but if I can find it, and there it is, I'm gonna to try to put it towards the top so it isn't as visible. You find a space and look clean through the cluster ball and stick the wire through. And if you have trouble getting both through, they might not cooperate, put one piece of wire at a time. See, one went through a different place, so just as long as you get them through the same space. And now they're kind of wobbly, but they sit nicely. That teardrop bead holds nicely. Now we're gonna add another teardrop bead. I'm thinking, let's see how this is gonna work. It fits nicely on that side. Will it fit nicely for the next one? So that'll find out where the knot is. Okay, look straight through and send the wire through. At that time, they both did not go to the same spot. And there we go, there they are. Here we go. It doesn't sit as tightly as I'd like it to, but the next teardrop will hold it in place. So you have to decide, would you rather have straight green shooting all the way down or do you like the, the color variation with the clear beads? That's actually very pretty, don't you think? Okay, another cluster bead. I'm getting really good at making these. Okay, there's the knot. Just be patient and Okay, one wire went through a different spot. I want them both to be through the same spot. There we go. Okay, now we have another teardrop bead. That one has a little defect, I don't like that. Let's get one that has a cleaner edge. Okay, that far. Now we're going to fill up the rest of this with the tiny beads until we get to the end. So let's gather up some more of these little beads. Come here guys, you're gonna get strung on here. So we're just filling the gap, as you can see from your pattern, from here to here, a few inches. Tiny, tiny beads again. Okay, eyeballs, here we go. Okay, so I'm gonna stop there. I took another little one back off because I'm using different beads and I just want each of these strands to hang evenly 
in the finished product. So since I'm using different beads, there's a little less here. And if I put this teardrop bead on, I think it's going to be too long. So I'm going to go back to copying what's here. So I've got one of these elongated beads. Let's see. I don't have a silver one. I'll use a gold one. That's absolutely fine. It'll be pretty. And I do think I at one point had, yeah, I had some gold claws. So that'll make a little tie in there. These are all different strands. And so I give myself some free license to have some fun with that. So got a crimping bead to come next. I want one that's a little bit bigger. Hold on, what do we got in here? There's one. I want one that's a little more substantial here. Crimping bead comes down. Now I'm going to put on that lobster claw clasp. And then I'm going to filter this back through. Actually, you know what? I could probably hide this wire better. Let me take back away some of this excess wire. Okay, I'm going to carefully set this back through. And if I'm lucky, I can go through a few more beads and hide that. That's going through this bead here. That's coming out the bottom. Okay. So I'm just going to try to pull that down to mimic the other side there. That's pretty close. Okay. Give a crimp. It's actually the gold would look nice with the bells. Everything's silver and gold on this project. And then come in tight and the little crimp where the extra wire disappears. And we have our second one. So here's what we're going to do here. I'm going to make a beautiful sun catcher. It's going to have five of these strands, your choice of colors, and it'll have five strands of bells. So once I get those all together, we have to hook them up to something. And this is where the floral ring comes in. This is MDF wood, and they're about a dollar or so a piece. This is not outside product. It will definitely swell up and get damaged if it gets wet. So this is a project that will be hung someplace protected or someplace indoors. So we're going to take the rings and put them together and we'll show you how we did that. And there's what we have. These were all nice and solid now and painted a matte black. So it looks like one solid piece. Three hooks on the top to hold it. And then there's 10 hooks on the bottom. And that's where I'll be hanging these strands. So let's add some strands. And I'll show you how we did that. Get everything that you've got in a row. And there's more strands here than I have spaces. That in itself could create a whole different <laughs> project. Let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hmm, bells. Anyways, you take the color that you want, and because I put the lobster claw there, you come on the inside or the outside. I'm gonna go on the outside edge. And I'm just gonna randomly pick these up and attach them. 
And this is kind of neat because if you want to change the colors out, you just unhook them and attach a different one. So right now we've got green and red, that's Christmas colors. And let's put, I'm going around the edge with my belts. Let's grab one of this amethyst or a lavender color. I got one, two, three, four, and we've got to throw a blue in there, of course. I've got champagne here. I've got clear green. So let me show you what this looks like now. It's going to be a little bit noisy, but these don't have to hit each other to ring because they have the clap inside. Clapper. Isn't that pretty? Just on its own. But I wanted a little more. So then I would take i got three of them here now to show you. The one I used as a guide, and these we're going to hook on the inside ring of those ten hooks. This one's called Champagne. I think it's very pretty. And I've got two more to show you, but I'm going to show you the completed. This is an example of how it would look. I would add two more strands and let me show you how I'd finish this off. Isn't that pretty? By adding the chain on the top. This was so simple. So I'm gonna take a piece of chain that I had kicking around. I want it to be strong. This is um, about two feet. I don't want any less than that because I want enough to hang. And I'm just going to take it and just tip and wind it through the first hook. through each of the hooks. Then you could take an O-ring and, and hook it together, but I have a little clasp here that I'm making use of. And clasp it together. Now it's all attached. And what I'm going to do is pull on it so that they're all even. Like that. And now I'm going to add a ring at the top. Now this is a little bit trickier, but it can be done. I take one of these key ring, and because that is really, really tight, I'm going to use a screwdriver to open that up. Hold on. Be careful you're using a screwdriver. So I'm going to use a screwdriver and open that up. See? And then I'm going to pull up on here. Those are my three. Oh, come here. There's two strands on each little segment here. Be patient, this will all work out. Okay, so I'm gonna use this to push through. I'm not going through the links, I'm letting the whole chain go through this ring. It definitely is gonna hold too. See, so I got one through. I'm gonna bring this one through, okay. It's on there. I'm going to come around here, and I only need to pull up one more because those two are already hitched there. So let's do one more. Find that, and there it is. These are nice, strong key ring holders. So get that wide enough that I can put this wire through, this chain. Like I said, I'm not going through the links. I'm letting the whole chain come through. This, um, Piece won't swivel. You could add a swivel to it if you wanted to. There I have it. You can just adjust where you want the height to be. That is so pretty. That shows you how to do it. But let me show you the one that I completed. This one will need a couple more strands. And that is right here. I absolutely of this. It has the color. I can't wait to see it in the sun. And you have just the gentle, gentle sound of those bells ringing. And since they're brass, you get this nice clear ting. See? 
Isn't that beautiful? And there you have it. This is one of my favorite things. I loved the sun catcher we did originally, and I thought to add some bells, and we did. And it's just not only going to look beautiful in the sun, but it's going to add some gentle sounds. What is not to like here? So if you like what you've seen, give us a like, subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to ring the bell so that you know when another episode of Tweaks with Tweak is coming along. Until then, make yourself a sun catcher, add some bells, and let it be musical as well as brilliant. See you again. Mm-hmm.